Okay, perfect. So first of all, welcome to YGMS. This is our first event of the Rise of Global Management Group. Um, my name is Aisha Mithani and I'm the Executive Vice President for RGMG this year. And I wanna first of all, thank all of you for coming here today. I know everyone's busy with their second week of classes and getting used to the Zoom lectures and all of that, but the whole team is so excited to kick things off uh, with this amazing event. Um, we have so much information to share with you, so many amazing speakers, ranging from a GMS prof to a GMS student, uh, and also professionals from the BCH, the Academic Success Center, International Exchange, and as well as the Co-op Center. Um, they all uh, will give you a lot of insight into Ted Rogers School of Management, and of course, the RGMG team is here to give you much more insight on the global management major, uh, as well as RGMG and all the events that we have to offer throughout the year. Uh, I just have one request. Kindly have your mics off when the speakers are talking because we don't want any background noise or disturbances while they're giving their speeches because they have really great things planned for all of you. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat box and our Vice President of Corporate Relations, Mohammed, will relay those questions to our speakers. So we'll start with the land acknowledgement. I know everyone is in different parts of the world right now, but we must acknowledge the land that our university is built on. So Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. So now the agenda for today. We're gonna to first of all start by uh, telling you guys what RGMG is about, the Rise and Global Management Group, what we are and what we stand for. Then you're going to get to meet the teams. Uh, so much of the team is here, actually. So you'll get to see them also. Some of the cameras are on, so you'll be able to tell who's who. Uh, and we're so excited to meet all of you. Next, our VP of events is going to tell you all the events that we have planned for the year, for the entire year, fall and winter semester. Then we have a very exciting social media contest with some exciting prizes. So do stay on the lookout for that. Do participate, because the prizes are really worth it. Uh, then we have an amazing speaker set uh, to share all their experience and um, facts with you guys then some novelties which are some of the projects that we have planned for this year um, and lastly how you can connect with us and our social media handles will all be linked so now on to you dimitri all right perfect thank you so much for love the introduction ayushi and i'll be talking about rgmg and what we stand for so the rising global management group rgmg is the official course union for the global management program at the ted rogers school of management we empower students by providing them with the tools and experiences needed to better prepare for their professional careers while they are still in school. Moreover, next slide, please. Are you there anything? Oh, sorry. Students are given the opportunity to broaden their classroom knowledge of global business thanks to the professional, academic, and social events that we host. We also provide students with opportunities to network with professionals, designation representatives, and recruiters. So now that you've literally like, now that we've presented our GMG, we're gonna be talking about our team and you're gonna meet our executive team first and then each court, each committee. So first of all, my name is Dimitri Mamari and I'm the president of our GMG this year. Um, I'm Ayushi Bithani, the executive vice president. I'm Nicole Lippa, I'm the VP Finance. Hey everyone, my name is Samia and I am the Vice President of Marketing and Creative this year. Hey everyone, I'm Magna Mather, the VP of Events this year. Hey everyone, my name is Mohammed. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Relations this year. Hey everyone, my name is Millie and I'm this year's Director of Events. Hi everyone, I'm the Event Associate and my name is Aria. Um, I'll just go ahead and introduce everyone actually to my events team. So we have our wonderful directors of events, Millie and Gerline, as well as our events associates, Daria, Aliza, and Matisha. All right, yeah, and I guess I'll introduce the marketing creative team. So we have, this is the biggest team in RGMG. As you guys can see, we have amazing uh, creative associates who are in charge of making all of the uh, graphics that you see. So we have Eamon, we have 
uh, Willie, who are marketing associates. We have Zoe Hall and Connor, who are creative associates. We have Ali, who is our director of photography. We have Eric, who is our outreach coordinator. And we have George, who's our director of marketing, and Avril, who's a director of creative. Hi everyone, so I'll be presenting my committee. So I have two fantastic directors. I have Alexia and Jordan, um, and I have three amazing associates, uh, Anjali, Rosie, and uh, Sukman. And this is my committee, which is the smallest committee, but it's the finance team, and I have my director of finance, Zane. Jenna, you can go ahead. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jan. I'm the Amazon Prime Student Campus Manager for this year. I was actually on our GMG last year as VP Corp, so familiar faces. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, I've been, I miss you folks, I, you guys are doing great. Um, but yeah, so this is gonna be super quick. Um, to those who don't know Amazon Prime, um, if you are in first year, you are eligible for a free six month trial. Um, you're also eligible for half off Amazon Prime. So definitely, um, um, make sure you um, take advantage of that um, and I promise this is just not it's not just an ad there's gonna be opportunities to win an Amazon gift card after this um, so definitely um, just wait a bit it's gonna be a quick Kahoot um, so so a couple things about Amazon Prime um, so with Amazon Prime we're able to get a couple of things so Amazon gaming um, Amazon Prime music um, as well as Amazon Prime video so if you ha don't if you don't know anything about Amazon Prime there's definitely that you should definitely check it out um, yeah, I think that's basically it. I'm not going to take up a lot of time. So, um, I'm going to quickly share my screen. Um, there's going to be a Kahoot code, um, and to the execs and to the people on our GMG, you are also eligible to join. I don't think there sh shouldn't be a reason why you shouldn't be. <laughs> um, so yeah. Awesome. Let's go. <laughs> or, so. Oh, Nader. Is the volume okay, or is it like super loud? Okay. Cool. I'll be closing it in five. Amazon Prime student members have free unlimited photo storage in Amazon Drive. Yes, the answer is true. So if you want to stir away from Google Drive, um, definitely um, hit up Amazon Drive. Why is that always Zaria? I feel like she just wins every single Kahoot. Even like a welcome last week, she was just there. No way, I promise, just, <laughs> just wondering. True or false, Amazon Prime students users can access lightning deals 30 minutes before other customers can. Ooh, oh, 
Okay, okay. Yes, it is true. There is a minimum purchase amount to access the shipping benefits. Ooh. Yeah, so there is a bit of a confusion. Don't worry, I got this question wrong too. Um, so if you have Amazon Prime, um, you don't need any shipping. It depends on the product, um, but most of the time um, you don't need a minimum purchase amount. Okay. Which of the following benefits is included with the Prime membership? So Twitch Prime, Prime Video, Amazon Prime Music, or all of them. A plus, yes. Um, you, I just, I did mention Amazon Prime Music. So to the people who got it wrong, you are not listening. Shame. I'm kidding. Okay, Dimitri. Now I know why you wanted to join. I will be giving it out. Don't worry. <laughs> Didn't get Amazon Prime at fifty percent discount. True or false? Awesome. What is the URL to join Amazon Prime students? So there are two. Um, it is a bit of a trick question. I just want to. I just want to make sure Demi doesn't win it. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I personally do have a URL. Um, it's the Ryerson view. So to those who are following me, you're able to um, join Amazon Prime straight through there, or you can um, use the Amazon uh, that's a join student one through there. So um, I'll be dropping the URLs in the chat. Um, feel free to follow. You don't even have to follow me. My account is public, so you can just click on the link there as well. All right. So in third place, we have Nicole. I'm assuming it's VP Finance, Nicole. Oh! Oh no, you got oh. out. Oh, Dimitri, you're a second. Oh, it's Zarya. <laughs> love that, love that. And special shout out to Eamon and Connor. Awesome. So, um, Zarya, if you can DM me your email, or if you want to give it to someone during the event, let me know. Send me an email. Um, and yeah, thank you for participating. Um, I'll be uh, at around other student group events as well. So if you didn't win, there's other chances there as well. Um, but thank you for the GM, uh, our GMG team. Um, I'll be sticking around. I want to support all you folks. Thank you so much, thank Jana. You. For those of you who don't know, Jana was the previous uh, VP Corp. She was my boss. Um, she used to run our GMG. Um, but yeah, now she's a vice president of TRSS. So please hit her up for your corporate needs. She used to be my boss too, by the way. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Jana. We're gonna, I'll just share my screen again. Okay, Megna, on to you. Yeah, so thank you so much for that, Jana. Um, so moving on, here's a quick look at all of our events planned this, for the school year. During our virtual fall semester, we'll be hosting three events, the USMC panel, fall student group fair, and our global Netflix party followed by our winter semester, where we'll be hosting a United Nations panel, RGMC and Industry Gala, Winter Student Group Fair, Pub Night, and Career Fair. So first off, we have our USMCA event in collaboration with POGSA. This is one of our brand new events this year. In October, we'll be hosting a panel discussion concerning USMCA. Therefore, the panelists we're aiming for are diplomats from three of the member countries, Canada, United States, and Mexico. Um, executives from global companies and corporations such as Nike and Apple, as well as international organizations such as the United Nations, World Trade Organization, and many more. And by the way, for any of those you guys who don't know, it's actually NAFTA, um, now renamed USMCA. So moving on. So next up, we have our fall student group fair in collaboration with Ted Rogers Student Society. Its goal is to introduce the international exchange students, as well as the international students, 
to the TRIAN program, RGMG, and the various nationality-based and region-based student groups available at Ryerson University. Our fall edition will be held on November 12th. Moving on. So in December, you can look forward to our global Netflix party. This is a night for GMS students to relax and connect after the fall semester's final exams. Keep an eye out for the poll on our IG story and you can help us pick out a movie to watch. Our first event for the winter semester is our United Nations panel in collaboration with CSRSA, another brand new event. This event revolves around a panel discussion concerning the, the United Nations. Um, Therefore, our panelists are aiming for multinational firm, business executives, dip diplomats from the UN, UNACTO, and Global Affairs Canada, and our very own GMS faculty who have worked very closely with the UN. And next up, we have our most anticipated of, of events of the year put together. The Ryerson Global Management Conference and Industry Gala are two separate traditional and annual events. However, this year, we decided to combine both of them into a one-of-a-kind event. This event will be two days long and will consist of two panel discussions, a Q&A session for each, a series of workshops, a case competition, a social, a breakfast, lunch and two dinners, and ending it off with the integrity of the delegates during a special night. We'll also be hosting another student group fair in collaboration with the Ted Rogers Student Society um, in the winter semester with the same goals as our fall student group fair. And following that, we'll be hosting our annual pub night held at the Rem in the Rye. It's an opportunity to, to connect students in a social environment while raising awareness and funds for a social cause. Um, this will be in collaboration with student groups and course unions at GSM. And to end off our school year, we have our GMS Career Fair. The Career Fair is a traditional and annual event revolving around professional networking. This event will allow us to provide students with the opportunity to meet and connect with numerous recruiters and industry professionals from various fields related to global management. Each company will be represented by at least one employer in their own booth. And here's a little photo collage of our events last year. As you can see, we have an amazing turnout all the time and a great opportunity at networking and generally broadening our classroom knowledge of global business. And off to you, George. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is George, and I'm the marketing director for RGMG this year. So right now we have a contest, social media context, uh, contest to be exact. So to win really cool prizes, you have to do the following. First of all, you actually have to follow us on Instagram. Otherwise, we will not be able to see that you actually tagged us on your story. So the second the second step, post a story of yourself attending this event, YGMS. Just try to be a little bit creative. We want to see all your creativeness. The third step, tag us at RGMG online and use the hashtag for this event, YGMS. And at the end of this presentation, we will be um, finalizing this social media contest and actually choosing the winners. So try to do this as soon as possible. And um, yeah, just try your luck to winning really great prizes. So next up, we have uh, Nader Nasruddin. He is our at-large director elected by the students. And this year he is our liaison. As a liaison, he uh, acts um, as a bridge between RGMG and TRSS. He is an amazing student leader and has been involved since his first year. And I'm sure he's gonna tell you a lot more about himself. So Nader, take it away. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, Aisha, I have co-host access, right? Yes, so you can just go ahead and uh, share your screen now. Okay, let's see if I can do that. All right, perfect. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes, you're good. Perfect, okay. Well, thank you all for coming out today and uh, for listening into this presentation. Uh, my name is Nader Nasruddin. I'm the at-large director for the Ted Rogers Student Society. Uh, and I'll be doing my presentation on what I'd like all of you to leave here thinking of yourselves as emerging leaders of tomorrow. So let's get into it. So this is the agenda for today. I'll go into a little bit of an introduction as to who I am, what the Ted Rogers Student Society does, as well as uh, introduce you to this year's board directors and what we do within our respective roles. 
some upcoming time projections as well as uh, office hours. And then we'll dive in a little bit deeper as to what the global management studies major is from my perspective. And then we'll end the session with a Q&A. So allow me to introduce myself once more. My name is Nader Nasruddin. My preferred pronouns are he and him. I'm a third year co-op global management studies major, uh, minoring in marketing. I've been RGMG's liaison since 2019, and I'm thrilled to be back once again to work with the team this year. I'm the former business management director so this, uh, for TRSS last year, so this is my second year being on the board of directors. Uh, I'm a Dean's List student and a top 200 student. So the top 200 program is a two-year uh, unique program that's designed for third and fourth year students uh, that's really aimed at providing them specialized experiential learning ex uh, activities for Ted Rogers Emerging Leaders uh, aimed at their personal and professional development. So if you're going into your third and fourth year, I highly recommend applying. It's truly a valuable experience. Over the summer, I worked on getting my certification in digital marketing from Google. Uh, it's a great addition to add to the resume in case anyone wants to have, um, uh, sorry, if anyone's looking for any marketing roles down the road, it's a great way to stand out. Uh, and lastly, I'm the Ted Rogers undergraduate and Joey and Toby Tenenbaum Business Scholarship Award winner. So what is the Ted Rogers Student Society? The Ted Rogers Student Society is a student elected society representing over 10,000 full-time undergraduate students attending the Ted Rogers School of Management at Ryerson University. We are the umbrella organization that represents 29 student groups in TRSM with RGMG being one of them. We were founded in 2003 as the Ryerson Commerce Society and were rebranded to the TRSS name a few years ago. We are the second largest business student society in Canada. And our mission at TRSS is that we strive on these three pillars, which fun fact is our logo. And we ensure that all our groups uh, follow and abide by, which are academic, professional, and social. It is my privilege and honor also to introduce you this year's TRSS executives and board directors. We have Brad as our president, Lauren as our executive vice president, Sally is our VP Finance, Jenna as our VP Corporate Relations, Kathy is our VP of Events, and Johnny is our VP Marketing. We go into the board directors. Again, you have myself as the at-large. Our school business management directors, Nicole, Adam, and Layla. Our business technology management directors, Shabrana and Jatavi. Our retail management director, Kevin. Our school of accounting and finance director, Carl. And last but not least, our hospitality and tourism director, Mohamed Badoui. If you ever wish to contact any of these amazing folks, our email handles are available at your convenience on the TRSS website. So what do we do as a board director representative? So we proactively bridge the gap between students, professors, and faculty about decisions made within TRSM. We, again, represent over the 10,000 full-time undergraduate students, implementing changes and determining the future progress of our school. We facilitate the allocation of resources to student organized initiatives. We also direct a number of internal committees, such as Week of Welcome, SGFC, so Student Group Funding Committee, uh, Governance Summits, and many, many other ones. We are also committed to office hours to help aid students with any inquiries or concerns. Uh, so we'll get a little bit more into that later on. Here's the tentative schedule for the time projections for TRSS. This is the usual schedule that you would see if we were to be in person. Uh, but however, this is uh, subject to change due to the fall semester being virtual and with COVID-19 as an ongoing situation. But in August, we had our Commerce Frosh, which is the orientation for first year students. This year's theme was Astro Frosh, uh, so space exploration. Last week, we had our Week of Welcome. And um, that both these events uh, were online for the very first time in history. And and it was a great turnout and a uh, huge success. So we hope that everyone had an amazing time as much as we did planning it. Uh, but two events I kind of want to direct your attention towards is the semi-annual general meeting and the annual general meeting. So these two events are very important to TRSS and it's open to everyone to attend. Uh, and it's basically a meeting where we kind of uh, inform the general public on what we've been doing uh, within our respective roles as something that we've been also doing uh, within our portfolios. Uh, so it's to kind of let you guys know what we've been doing up to date. But it's also a great way to address your concerns or uh, questions that you may have that might be applicable to you or to others um, and things that you want us to do better or more of. Office hours haven't been confirmed yet this semester, but when they do, schedule a meeting with us. These conversations can range from topics such as academics, ordering business cards or marketing service, questions or concerns about event planning or execution, how do you manage your team's budget? So for instance, whether you should spend X amount of dollars on your team uh, on a certain expense, and then we'll kind of just give you the tips and tricks on how do you, uh, you know, save some money and use allocate the money towards something else, general operations of your student group, starting the student group under our organization, or anything at all. 
So seeing as though this is the YGMS event, I thought I'd share with you a little bit about my perspective as to why I chose the GMS major. So the reason why I chose it was because it aligned with many of my personal goals in helping me become successful while being ready for the real world. Uh, the GMS, I've always you know, loved the idea of working internationally and working abroad as a uh, marketing director for a Fortune 500 company. But additionally, the GMS major gives students an excellent ground to practice those real life skills and actually put themselves to the test. So for instance, the Global Business Environment course known as GMS 400, uh, by far one of my favorite courses that I've taken so far, uh, it really um, gives students the acquired knowledge and cultural understanding of how to work in an international business setting through the uh, country risk analysis assignment that you have to do. Uh, but also the GMS major gives students the global perspective to pursue their desired features. Now, because GMS is so broad, there are so many pathways you can choose. For instance, I chose the international marketing route, but for others, I've seen them do finance or uh, political structure, or there is uh, entrepreneurship or economics. It really depends on your preferences and what you're really passionate about. But I'm also passionate about the GMS major and advocating towards it because it serves as the best place for students to showcase their ability to excel, but also enhance their skills with the intense business curriculum. Now, be it through nature or nurture, I believe I, everyone here is infused with leadership qualities that allow us to be a part of this motion in creating better change within our community. Now, there really hasn't been more of a call for leaders than today, and it all starts here. If you think that as a first year student that there aren't any opportunities for you to excel in, you're completely wrong. At TRSM, it, there's plenty of opportunities filled inside and out for students to really be the best they can be. Now, my platform being on the Student Society is that I try to advocate and get more students to be the, uh, like to really get heavily involved within our community and really make a difference with, within each of our lives. Now, TRSM strives on this idea of the fact that we truly are leaders of tomorrow. We're the future decision makers, future policy changers, and future emerging leaders. Now, each of you have a voice and a passion, and it's really about having the confidence to get out there and expose yourself to others. Um, and one way of doing that is really applying yourself to groups and uh, get out there and expose yourself to others and really uh, apply yourself to the, uh, like on the hiring posts. So a lot of groups are still hiring right now, and um, they're looking for individuals like yourself to fill their team with your tenacity and your knowledge. Um, my life model that I always kind of strive by and something that's always helped me along the way. Uh, and I hope that it helps you find your voice and passion in becoming a leader of tomorrow is work to make your past thankful and your future proud. Work to make your past thankful and your future proud. I'll leave it at that and for you to think about uh, for the whole session. And I'll leave my contact information here so you can email me at at large at TRSS society.ca. I've also left my uh, username handles for my social media accounts for LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, if you wish to communicate with me there. But I'd like to thank RGMG for inviting me, as well as everyone here for listening to my presentation, and we'll open the floor to a Q&A session. Thank you. Nader, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure our attendees really loved hearing so about what you have to say, and is really insightful about the services that TRSS provides for all of our students. Um, so while we wait for questions to come in from our attendees, I'll just, uh, you know, uh, throw in some questions your way. So what has been your um, TRSS experience so far, like coming in first year, you know, coming out of high school, uh, how did you uh, navigate TRSS and how did you get involved? Honestly, the way I kind of educated myself about TRSS was through Frosh. So uh, seeing what their organization has been doing and what they do for the students, that really kind of, you know, shined the light for me and really opened my eyes and really got me to think, you know what, I want to be on that stage and just, you know, plan these events, really advocate for student rights. Uh, that's, I've been doing this for like God knows how long, <laughs> um, but uh, like it's just something a passion of mine, but it was at Frosh where I really got to understand uh, what TRSS is doing and uh, what they really stand for and I truly respect what they've done over the years. Um, what, are, uh, what are some of your um, favorite moments as part of TRSS? I mean, um, some of us that know you, we start, you started at, you know, on street team, moved your way up as a BM director, now an at large director. I'm sure you have, you know, a quite big, big range of experiences, but 
if you could pick maybe like one or two, what, what would you say are the top, top one? Um, honestly, it, like to encompass all like my three years on being on TRSS, it's really about the amazing connections and network that I got to build throughout those three years. Like I've met my closest friends through TRSS and those years are completely uh, like, you know, are like you have to cherish those moments. And honestly, TRSS is a great way to also connect with other students on campus. Like, like I said, we have like over 10,000 students at the school and, you know, you really need to get to know each other and really just under, uh, like see different people and uh, TRSS is the way to do it. And so for me, the most valuable experience I took away from it was, um, you know, having built amazing relationships and friendships with uh, these incredible people that do so much for uh, all the students at TRSM. Um, I think you have uh, some questions in the chat, but I just, uh, before we go move on to those, I have a, like one urgent question. Uh, I'm sure our students would also like to know, what are some pieces of advice that you would give your, I mean, you're a very experienced individual and I'm sure you have a lot of knowledge to impart on the coming uh, leaders of tomorrow. So what would you say to them? Like, uh, what was the question again? Sorry, you got a lot of... Well, what's, uh, what's some advice that you would give them? The, as You know, how to get involved with TRSS or just um, any, any student group? Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, like ever get rejection. You know, whenever it comes to applying, you know, there's bound to be, you know, obstacles or conflicts down the road where you're not, you're not, you know, hired for the specific role that you apply for. That's with like co-op too. I, I'm sure many of us can relate to that. Um, but you have to keep trying. You have to, like I said, you have to have a voice and passion. That's something everyone has and the confidence to really just get out there and, you know, use that voice to kind of do what you need to do and really shine within uh, the community. Just, you know, always try it's there's no harm in doing that whatsoever I, I believe there was a question sorry my screen yeah and, uh, Nicole asks uh, how has getting involved with TRSS enhanced your undergraduate career and changed you as a person honestly it's changed me for the better I think it's shaped me into an individual that uh, in, into a better person today uh, there's so many things that you could take away from like whether it's you know your problem solving skills or your analytical skills um, but also the, I think the utmost importance is really your communication uh, skills like how do you communicate how do you work with different types of people like within working in TRSS you're going to work with so many different people with so many different uh, work styles and ethics so uh, it's I think that's something that you can take away from and that's really enhanced my undergraduate career because you know you take away from these learning curves and um, that also helps you structure into be, being a better person. Uh, Eamon asked uh, if you could describe the GMS major in one word what would it be? <laughs> I don't know if I could say this way. <laughs> um, if I could describe it in one word Like, I mean, I, I did mention how broad the GMS major is because there's so many options for students to take on. As I mentioned in my presentation, I took the international marketing route, uh, and that's why I'm minoring in marketing. And I chose, uh, you know, I could have majored in marketing, but the thing was, I didn't want to be just restricted to that. And so that's why I chose global management because of its intense business curriculum and how it really applies students uh, to the uh, you know real life skills through those required courses that they have to take uh, for those students like they have to take. Um, I, I would say broad, but truly unique. That's that's what I would say. Thank you, Amin, for that question. Uh, and for our final question, I think it's probably uh, one of the better questions. Mm -hmm. um, and something uh, a lot of students actually ask everyone is that how do you balance it all? You know, with classes being both, um, you know, oh, those are big words. Yeah, with classes. Asynchronous and asynchronous. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot say those words. And with the student yeah. society. 
God, you know, I get asked this question a lot and I never have like a solid answer. I, you really have to have good time management and organizational skills. Like I literally have a whiteboard like right next to me and I always like just kind of write down everything. I have like sticky notes that kind of just tell me what I need to do. Um, I definitely use GCal. I, I, my life revolves around GCal. So that's Google Calendar, if, no, uh, if, uh, no one's, if anyone's unsure of what that was. Um, you really have to be organized. And I think you need to also set out your priorities in advance. Like for me, I have a part-time job. I'm looking for co-op positions. I'm working with TRSS and still being an undergraduate student. So, you know, you really need to prioritize and figure out, you know, am I able to take on this full workload or not? You re it really depends on the person itself uh, because there's people that, you know, are professionals at multitasking, uh, a bunch of things. For me, I've been doing this for quite some time, so I've fully adjusted to this uh, transition. Uh, but definitely, definitely use resources such as Google Calendar or a whiteboard um, or sticky notes to kind of just, you know, let yourself know what you need to do and how do you kind of manage uh, your day or an operations around that. There, I think there's like more questions, but do we have time to answer them? Yeah, 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 you can. Oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> I don't know how long I had. Yeah. Um, what was the next question? What was the highlight of your first year? Oh God. Um, <laughs> the highlight of my first year? Well, I, I, I think Mo, you mentioned it in my introduction. I, I started off as a breakthrough mentee and a uh, street team ambassador my first year. And then some crazy thought went into my head and I was like, well, you know what? I kind of want to just jump uh, into being a board director. So I, I ran for the business management director position in my first year. Uh, I actually ran with Mo. We were in the same slate. Uh, go Ignite. <laughs> um, but I and honestly winning that election because I honestly thought I wasn't going to win it. I was going up against like third year students and uh, there was like six of us running for that position. So that was really the highlight. Um, I, I remember like when we got the results, I was just like jumping so high. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so the next question is uh, Fiona asks, uh, after you complete your degree, uh, what are the job opportunities? I, I definitely want to go down the business and film route. I, I love the marketing aspect towards, you know, uh, film production. So I, everyone who knows me, I, I plan on leaving Canada and going, going to California. Hopefully it's not all burned down by then. Um, but that's, that's the uh, feature job. I, I definitely want to get into the business and film uh, industry. I, I think it's uh, it's something that not a lot of students take, but I think you really need to have a passion for it uh, and the knowledge of how that whole industry kind of works. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I want to go down. Um, and I think for our last question, uh, if you have no job experience, how, to, uh, how do you make your application in interesting when applying for positions in TRSS? This is a really, really good question. So thank you, um, Arija. I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, you know, I get this a lot as well. Um, you don't need any job experience. I think it's just who you are as an individual matters way more than what you've done in the past. I think it's what asset do you bring to the team? So whether it's you know your skill set or what you're able to do. Um, you know, having job experience is great to see, you know, what you've done in the past and what you kind of took away from those roles, but it's not required. It's not necessary. I think it's uh, who you are as a person, what you're able to bring to the team. What do you think we should be doing differently? That's something that I think TRSS always looks for. Whenever we move into a new term or new year, we always look into how can we do things better? So if you have an amazing idea uh, as to what, you know, the Ted Rogers Student Society could do better or do more of, Right. And like I mentioned, our semi-annual general meeting and our annual general meeting, uh, though that's a great chance to actually uh, let us know. And that would be your best case if you don't have any job experience and you want to apply for TRSS. Hey, Nader, thank you so much. Uh, we th on behalf of RGMG, thank you for coming out. Um, as well as uh, on behalf of our students, thank you so much for speaking on such uh, you know important stuff. And uh, 
we look forward to working with you this year. Thank you. No, I'm thrilled to be working with all of you again this year. So I'm going to stick around, obviously, and um, here if you guys need me. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Alize Ali and uh, Chris, uh, Christine McKay. Uh, they both work for the BCH, and uh, Alize works really closely with RGMG, and we're excited to hear uh, all that they have to talk about. Great. Hey, thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you, RGMG, for having both of us here today. It's great to see so many faces, great to see some familiar names. Um, so I'm just going to quickly share my screen. We do have um, a presentation that we did want to run through pretty quickly. Shouldn't take up too much time. Um, perfect. Um, so hi again, everyone. Um, my name is Eliza Ali. Thank you for the introduction earlier. Um, so Christina and I just wanted to take a moment to chat with you all a little bit about the Business Career Hub, um, kind of our team, what we, what we do for the team, and uh, how we're here to support you. Um, so I'll actually pass it over to Christine first for an introduction of uh, her and her role at the BCH. Sure, thanks so much. Um, so as Lizzie mentioned, my name is Christine. I am the co-op coordinator uh, for the GMS program specifically. So for students that are interested in co-op, they would be working with me on things like the resumes, the cover letters, their interviewing, and pretty much anything, anything co-op related. Um, I am also the co-op coordinator for law and business, HR, and entrepreneurship, and I am actually uh, an alum from PRSM. I graduated from the HR program. Uh, Elise, I'll pass it back over to you. You're on mute. Thank you for that. Um, so I am the a uh, career consultant for the GMS program, but also law and business and entre entrepreneurship. So if in any of those majors, please do reach out and connect with me. Um, so I support students who are either interested in applying to co-op or who aren't in the co-op program, as well as new grads and alumni. Um, so I get to work with a variety of lovely folks. Uh, fun fact about me, I'm a graduate from the business technology management program. Um, and earlier in the call, I did hear people talking about student groups and being involved in a bunch of other things. So I can proudly say I was involved on campus in a few things. I heard street team and breakthrough program floating around. So I was part of that. Um, I was on the Ryerson Consulting Association, Association as well. So um, it's great to see that the student group culture is still alive and thriving at TRSM. Okay, so just a quick uh, overview of what we'll be talking about over the next 10, 15 minutes or so, just an overview of who we are, our services, um, kind of how our team is structured, and then we'll talk a little bit about the co-op program um, and how to apply, and then of course how to connect with us afterwards as well. Um, so we will dive in first to just the BCH or the Business Career Hub um, at a high level, and you can almost see or think of us as a team with various departments underneath us. Um, and we're quite a large team, um, but three teams that I think um, you're probably either most aware of or the ones that you will be interacting with the most is careers, co-op, and boot camps. And we'll talk a little bit more about each one, um, but just to kind of paint you a picture, I sit under careers, Christine sits under co-op, and then our boot camps team is a separate uh, team. We still work with them pretty closely, but we'll talk more about um, each team in a bit more detail. Um, and just in terms of our services and how we are here to help you um, as a student. So we help in a variety of different areas surrounding your career path and career journey. Um, so anything as simple or um, as the first step, such as action planning. So what is the right career path for me? Uh, what can I do with my GMS major or whatever major it is that you declared? Um, what are the different opportunities on campus or even off campus opportunities? If we're able to connect you to that, happy to do so. If you're in the co-op program and you're stuck about which uh, path you should be taking, which employer to focus on, talk to Christine and she'll be happy to kind of coach you through that and um, kind of highlight some opportunities that could be a fit for you. Um, with respect to co-op application prep, so the careers team and I, we do prepare all of those interested candidates um, with their applications. So if you're unsure about a resume, cover letters make you uncomfortable, uh, that's what we're here for. So we're here to review, but also provide you with feedback and just kind of walk you through that process and really coach you in that one-on-one -on -one kind of environment. Um, aside from that, like I said, our boot camps team is definitely uh, a, a well-oiled machine. So if you're interested in learning a new skill, whether it's uh, something really technical or something um, specific to related to an industry, the boot camp team is here to kind of help you bridge that gap and provide you with those industry relevant skills and knowledge. Um, and then I think the, the item that stresses people up the most or concerns them the most is obviously recruitment. So where will I land after I graduate from my four or five year program? And again, the BCH is here to help you through that process. 
Um, so we do one on one sessions. We offer virtual drop ins as well. So you're welcome to chat with your co op coordinator or career consultant at any time to kind of again walk through that um, that planning phase or maybe you just need help with an interview coming up. You have a networking event that you're not really sure how to prepare for. Um, again, we're here to kind of help you through that and coach you through that entire process. So uh, just taking a look at the careers team here, there is a, a large team um, and this actually isn't all of us I'm realizing. The slide is a little outdated. We're missing a couple of folks, um, but that's me kind of on the upper right hand side there. So my three programs. And then if you're not in any of those three programs, we have a dedicated career consultant for you. Um, we also do have Paige Fong. She is a career consultant for marketing who isn't on the slide and Amin Desai who is the career consultant for HR and accounting. So we will have to update the slide to include them. But basically, we're all here for you. You can book an appointment with any one of us if you do need some uh, support in your career journey. Um, we've got the co-op team up next. And so maybe, Christine, you can chat a little bit more about you and your team here. Sure, absolutely. So this is our team. So we have a team of five uh, co-op coordinators and then our manager, Manhattan, at the bottom. Um, the folks that aren't on the screen are also our admin team. So if you decide to join the co-op program, you're not only joining a team of co-op coordinators, but we do also have an admin team that you would hear from on a pretty regular basis to schedule um, interviews and send out offers and that type of thing. The three of them aren't posted here, but they are also a core part of our team. Um, so the five coordinators, we have Melody, Ray, Laura, Madhavi, and myself, and then our manager, Manhattan, down in the bottom corner. Um, everybody is, is great. So again, if you did want to do a drop in to speak with anybody, you're more than welcome to. Um, co-op students tend to stay within their co-op coordinator specifically. Um, but if, you know, an emergency does come up or if you need to talk, chat with somebody immediately, we all have drop in hours during the week as well. So you're more than welcome to email us anytime between Monday to Friday, 10 to 4, and somebody will be there to chat with you. Awesome. And just on the note of drop ins, um, similar idea with the careers team. Anytime between the hours of 10 and 4, if you just quickly needed to ask a question, you have a last minute interview coming up. Again, the careers team is also happy to, to kind of hop on a quick call and help you with that. Um, so we do take advantage of this stuff. Uh, moving on to our bootcamp team, which I've talked about a couple times already, but maybe it's still a little bit unclear to some of you. Um, and the best way to really think about a bootcamp is almost like a crash course in a certain industry related skill. And all of these skills that you see on the screen, and there's even more on our website, which I do recommend you check out, these are all skills or areas of expertise that employers have told us that, hey, we would like to see this. So the bootcamp team, what they did is they came up with these crash courses that are offered to students so that they can bridge that gap. These look absolutely great on a resume. Um, you learn so much um, in these three hour sessions and we've got a really big list of them. This is just a sample. Um, but we've got everything from Salesforce to Excel, PowerPoint, um, Python, R. So really, really impressive stuff. Um, another little fun fact about me is I used to be a recruiter. So um, just speaking from a recruiter's perspective, again, these look great on your resume. It shows that, you know, you value that ongoing development and learning. Um, you have those skills that employers clearly value. So I do recommend you check them out. Um, the calendar and the tickets are currently live and I do recommend securing your spot way in advance just because tickets do tend to sell out um, you don't want to miss your spots with these. Um, aside from boot camps, we do also offer preparatory programs and those are typically held in the summer. So we've got a few here on the screen. So we've got the capital markets prep program and cybersecurity. Um, I think in the past, the more popular ones with the GMS major have been the consulting prep program, but also the project management prep program. And those are two to three day long sessions where we cover everything about that industry from A to Z. So how do you build a resume specific to that field? Um, how do you job hunt in that industry? We'll connect you with alumni in that field. So it's really uh, another version of a crash course, but just over the period of maybe two or three days instead of two or three hours. Um, so you definitely wanna keep an eye out for those for the next summer as well. Um, I did also want to highlight that all of these services, including boot camps, you do pay for them in your tuition um, already. So please do take advantage of this stuff um, because you don't want your money to go to waste. Um, but also you do want to learn and uh, stay competitive. And that's the best way to kind of go about doing that. Um, so I talked for quite a bit of time. So I'll pass it over to Christine to walk us through co-op. Sure, sounds good. Thank you so much. I'm going to hope that you will keep track of the slides. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so the Time Rogers Co-op Program is one of the largest co-op programs in Canada and we are continuously growing. I think we just hit a milestone of about 2,000 students. So we are 
continuing to grow our program. Um, the thing that a lot of students ask about with, with the call program is, is, is there a certain like limit or cap on how many students we let in? Um, and right now the answer is no. So it's not like we will only let in like the top 10 or 15% of students. Really, when you are applying for co-op, you're not going, necessarily going up against your friends, you're going up against yourself. It's about if you can meet all the requirements, if you can meet the academic requirement, the resume, the cover letter, you know, the video interview, if you think that, if, if we feel that you're a well-rounded candidate for the co-op program, then we will, you know, allow you to, to, to join the program specifically, but there's no limit or cap on how many students that we let in. We can go over the next slide. Um, one of the other teams that you are probably not super aware of because they do a lot of work behind the scenes is our business development team. So there are three of them here. There is actually four of them now. Um, but our business development team is essentially our external um, partner facing staff. Um, so our business development team, they are out there, they're promoting the co-op students, they're promoting the co-op program, and they're trying to get as many amazing opportunities for our students as possible. Um, there are some times when our business development team will send us specific jobs and, you know, look for recommendations for top students. So if we know that there are a couple of students that are really interested and would be an amazing fit for these roles, um, as the co-op coordinators, we're allowed to put those students forward as well. But our business development team, we work quite closely with them and uh, they work with many, many different types of employers, everything from finance, accounting, marketing roles, anything in HR, um, you name it, we, we most likely have, um, you know, some type of contact with a lot of these major uh, industry partners. Um, so they're a big part of our team as well, even though they're not necessarily um, front facing. We'll go to the next slide. Um, so these are just some of the roles that we have had our students had in the past. Um, so, like you see here, there's a wide variety of companies, everything from Deloitte, CIBC. We do work with a lot of not-for-profits as well, so that's why Sick Kids is in there, um, you know, IBM, um, BCG, and Ritual. Um, so you'll see that it's a wide variety of companies. Um, a lot of students think that we work with mainly just big companies, um, but that's not necessarily the case. We do have a lot of startups and, and a lot of smaller companies as well. Um, so if you were to be accepted into the co-op program, you know, I'd like to start off by asking my students what types of jobs or companies they're interested in. Um, if you are interested in companies that we don't, you know, work with right then and there, then that means that we could have the opportunity to help get you there for a co-op work term. Um, so it's not necessarily just big corporate companies. Companies. Um, we do work with many different types of roles and many different types of positions as well. Um, the cool thing specifically about the uh, GMS program is because it's so wide and so broad, um, our, a lot of our students will do many different things. Um, some of our students will have roles that have a little bit more of that international component, like international supply chain um, and consulting and things like that as well. Um, but then there are other roles that our students will try that are a little bit, you know, in different areas. So for example, like project management and marketing. Um, and if you're doing a minor in something, I find that a lot of GMS students will do something related to their minor. So if they're doing a minor in accounting or a minor in finance, maybe they want to try out a couple of roles in that field. Um, but the cool thing about GMS is that there are a lot of of different types of opportunities that can be available to you. And we see our students do many different types of things in the co-op program. We'll go to the next slide. Great. Um, so the other cool thing about co-op is that it is paid positions. So we only support paid positions. Um, so when you are accepted into the co-op program for your work terms, you will be getting um, paid either on a you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis, but you will be compensated. So on average, our students make about $36,000 per work term. Um, and you'll also be able to gain up to about 16 months of relevant working experience while you're in the co-op program. Um, for GMS students, the way that your sequence works is that you will be given uh, two work terms back to back. So one in the summer and one in the fall. Um, so you'll be in school for winters, but then on work terms for summer and fall terms. Um, and I find that students, you know, they choose to either do four completely different terms so if you wanted to do four unique experiences that would be fine but I also find that students like to try and do maybe eight months here and eight months there or I find other students will try to do like 12 or 16 months within the same type of role um, but you know in general you would be getting up to about 16 months of relevant experiences with four work terms four months each um, and on average our students earn on average 36,000 um, you know per work term specifically but they are paid positions 
Um, we do also have our live actor simulation. So this is a newer part of the co-op program. Um, but when, when you get accepted into co-op, we understand that you haven't been in professional business or you may not necessarily have been in business professional situations before. So why we created our live actor industry simulations is to give you a bit of an idea of the types of situations that you might encounter while in the workplace. Um, so this actually includes um, some actors. So we've actually partnered with another unit uh, in Ryerson to bring in some actors and they role play different types of situations with you. Um, so they will role play things, for example, if you need to have a difficult conversation with your manager or if you are, you know, working in a team, but someone, um, you know, someone that you're working with isn't necessarily cooperating and you need to have that difficult conversation. Um, so these simulations will help you get a better understanding as to the types of situations you might encounter and will also help train you on how to do, how to navigate yourself through those conversations while you're in a workroom. So again, live actors, they role play different types of situations. Um, this has been one of the areas of the, uh, the co-op prep program in general that we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on because it helps train our students before they're you know put in those situations specifically go to the next slide um, you also would have access to our peer mentorship program so our co-op connect program um, every student who is in their first year in the co-op program will be paired up with a senior student um, and most of the time we try to pair it up so that the senior student um, and the and the new student they, they have something in common whether they're in the same program or the same major or they're interested in similar types of jobs or have similar interests. Um, but we will pair you up with a senior student. And the idea behind this is that the senior student has gone through what you're about to experience and go through. So they would be able to provide some insight and some, you know, thoughts and advice based on their own experiences as well. So it's a, it's a chance for you to start to expand your co-op network a little bit. Um, each mentor is paired up with about four to five mentees as well. So you might also have the opportunity to meet other uh, first year co-op students just to see what their experiences are like. And, and, and we kind of try to build a more community collaborative approach when you get accepted into the co-op program. And this is kind of just one aspect of that. Um, we care about your success. Uh, like I mentioned, we have a team of five co-op coordinators, um, you know, who are dedicated to our students. And I think part of the reason why our program works so well is because the people in the program are super passionate about what they do. Anytime I get an email from a student saying, hey, like I landed a position or hey, I got my first interview, it almost feels like us as a team got that first interview or, or got that particular job. So we are here 100%. Um, so you have a whole team behind you. Um, it's not an easy process to go through and we understand that, um, but you have a whole team of people that is here to help you um, and, and to dedicate, you know, dedicate ourselves to you to make sure that you do the best that you can within this program specifically. Um, so we have one on one coaching, like I mentioned, so you can book appointments with us. Um, you, we have drop in hours as well. And, and if you need anything, you have a whole team uh, to support you throughout the process. Um, now, who is eligible for co-op? So in the GMS program, students apply at the end of their second year. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so if you are going into your second year now, the deadline is always June 1st. So in this case, it would be June 1st of 2021. Um, keep in mind for GMS, you do need a CGPA of a minimum of 2.8. You don't need 3.0, but you do need to meet that minimum CGPA of 2.8. That is a requirement in order to get into the program. Um, something else to keep in mind for GMS specific students is that you are required to complete GMS 400 and get a minimum grade of a B plus. Um, I believe this is one of the courses that students take in their winter semester of their second year. So if you are thinking about maybe dropping a course or, you know, if you want to drop down to four instead of five, I would not recommend dropping GMS 400 because this one is an absolute requirement to take and have a grade of a B plus in, in order to be accepted. Um, the other thing that you will want to keep in mind for the application package, you will need to submit a resume, a cover letter, and a video interview as well. Um, we certainly provide more, um, you know, information and insight closer to the application dates. But if you are interested in applying to co-op, in that case, you would meet with Alize and the rest of the careers team to start to go over um, your, uh, your resumes and your cover letters and how you can make your application really strong. Um, for applications to get into co-op, we don't necessarily look at just, you know, if everything is perfect, we look for the potential. Um, so even if we think that there are some areas of improvement, but we think that you would be a very strong potential professional to join one of our employer partners, that's mainly what we look for. Um, we look for things like passion and motivation, somebody that will be really be dedicated to the 
program, um, you know, as well as in the certain academic part of their program. So at the end of your second year is when you would apply. Um, do you want me to cover this part, Lisa, or do you want to chat about it? Yeah, sure. I can quickly just touch on how to book an appointment. I know Christine and I both kind of alluded to this a couple of times now to, to come speak with us um, if possible. Um, but do check out our website, um, our the BCH website. Even if you just Google us, BCH um, Ryerson, we're the first ones that come up. Um, and if you scroll down, you'll see a schedule now button. And then you can easily schedule an appointment with either Christine, myself, or anyone else on our team. Um, you have the option to pick a 30 minute meeting or a one hour meeting. So it's totally up to you. Um, and then following that, you'll get a calendar invite. So just check your Google calendar, um, accept that meeting, and then you'll see a link to join. It's usually a Google Hangouts link. And then just join that link at the time of your meeting. Um, and that's how you can do that one-on-one -on -one appointment. Um, if you wanted to do that last minute drop in, um, just email trsmcareers at ryerson.ca at any time between 10 and four and just say, hello, I'm in this program, I'm in co-op or I'm not in co-op and I'd like to meet with a consultant or coordinator. And then in the next 10 to 15 minutes, usually a quick turnaround, you'll get a link to join um, a call with the first available provider um, right there on the spot. So um, we're, we're here for you most hours of the day. Um, and if not, you are welcome to book that one-on-one -on -one to come chat with us. Okay, just gonna plug our social media just as a, Final, um, final thought here. Um, there's loads happening with the hub. Um, we have loads of employer events throughout the fall semester. Um, we've got the co-op deadline at the end of next semester. So we are constantly in full force. So do follow us on social media just to keep up with all the deadlines, with all the important announcements, that kind of thing. Um, we do keep that relatively up to date. So do check that out um, and give us a follow so you don't miss out on anything there. Um, and there is just some of our information. Maybe you want to take a picture of that slide for your reference. Um, but like I said, 10 to 4, we're here to, to chat. We've got drop-ins and then our websites are also linked down there if you're interested in checking us out even further. Um, we'll open the floor up to questions now. I think we did have a few in the chat. So um, yeah. we'll just pull that up. Um, so Eamon asked the first question. Uh, she uh, is uh, directed to both uh, you and Christine. Uh, what is the best way to prepare yourself as a co as a student for co-op? Um, I don't know if the question is if they're getting into co-op or if they're already in co-op. Uh, Eamon is here, so maybe she can clarify her question. Oh, to prepare the application for co-op? Um, Elise, do you want to take this one or do you want me to jump in? Sure, yeah, I can start off and then Christine, maybe you can hop in. Um, so Christine mentioned earlier that the team looks for a well-rounded application, right? They don't just look at your grades, they don't just look at um, your resume, but they look at everything pretty holistically. So the best way to prepare is really to be that well-rounded candidate. So have that minimum CGPA, of course, um, and really demonstrate your, your dedication and your passion to learning and growing. Um, that no one's looking for a perfect student or a perfect candidate. They're really looking for that potential. Um, so try to get involved in a student group if your schedule allows for it. Um, every experience is valuable. I think sometimes people get really caught up that, oh, I don't have experience at a bank. What am I going to do? Um, that's not the case. Even working at the mall, working in retail, working in fast food, those are some great transfer transferable skills that come out of those experiences. And we do want to see you highlight that. Um, so definitely focus and leverage the experiences that you have. Um, show that you're passionate about growing about learning and that you'd be a good representation of Ryerson and TRSM when you go out into a co-op term. Yeah, absolutely. Just to kind of bounce off of Elise's answer, something that we specifically look for and, and something that always helps is what you're doing outside of the classroom. So obviously we know that under that academics are a huge part of it. Um, but like Elise mentioned, things like student groups and volunteering and, you know, possibly like a part time job. Those are ways that you can really start to develop this experience. Um, and I have a lot of students that will come to me and say something along the lines of, oh, I only have like I'm only like a sales associate um, or like I only am like a hostess at a restaurant. Um, and you, I, I don't know if students realize it at the time, but there are so many skills that you develop from being in those positions. And those are the skills that we're looking for, for students who, you know, get accepted into the call program. And then, like I mentioned, 
someone who's very motivated, someone that's very dedicated. The video interview can be a little bit awkward and, and we understand that. I've been through a virtual interview myself. It's not the easiest thing to go through, but even if you can show a little bit of personality and a little bit of positivity in the app, in the video interview as well, we're not looking for it to be perfect, but we are looking for potential. Um, and then once you are starting to prepare your application, again, if you wanted to meet with Elise or someone on the careers team to work with you through, you know, doing the video interview to work on how to format your resume, um, how to format your cover letter and answering the question why you would be a good fit for, for co-op, um, you're more than welcome to meet with the team to help you with that as well. Yeah, exactly. Just to kind of build on that, um, even though the deadline is June 1st, you definitely don't want to be applying like May 30th. Uh, so please do book meetings in advance and maybe you want to focus on your resume first and then you want to come back and work on your cover letter and then come back and do a mock interview. Um, that's definitely an approach that a lot of students took this past year and I'm happy to meet with people multiple times, even if it's just for one co-op application and I know the rest of the team is open to that as well. Thank you so much for answering that. Eamon, thank you for the question. Uh, Fiona uh, is asking at what, uh, ooh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I uh, skipped over one question. Sarah is asking, uh, what advice uh, would you give a direct entry student who doesn't have uh, co-op as an option? Yeah, so I can start this one off. Um, so even though you're not in the co-op program officially, I think there's still loads of opportunity for other students as well. Um, and I do wanna clear up a misconception that the BCH and all of our services, they're available to you whether you're in co-op or not. Um, so even if you're not in the co-op program, you're still welcome to meet with the careers team on an ongoing basis and still receive that coaching. Um, and I think the biggest difference between being in co-op versus not, you do have to be a bit more proactive if you're not in co-op. Um, with that being said, you're not handed anything in co-op either. You're still working hard regardless. Um, but as a direct entry student, maybe you're doing a little bit more research on your own or you're connecting with your career consultant a little bit more just to make sure that you're doing what you got to do and that you're taking advantage of all the opportunities that are available to you. Uh, we completely get there's loads happening on this campus or on this campus virtually. Um, we've got loads of events. Um, every department, it seems like, is doing something on Zoom or something of that uh, nature. So there is a lot happening, but really connect and leverage your resources. TRSS is doing great work. The Academic Success Center is doing great work. And I like to think we're doing great work. So try to put all these different pieces together and really create a program for you, even though there's no official title associated with it. I think there's still loads happening on campus for you to leverage. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for that question. Ooh, sorry. Um, the next question is by Fiona. Um, at what point in your program are you considered eligible for co-op? So if you want, I can take this one. Um, so students in the GMS program will be applying at the end of their second year. So all business management programs, except for the entrepreneurship major, apply at the end of their second year. Um, so this, so if you are in going into your second year now, you would be eligible to apply at the end of it by our June 1st deadline. If you're just in your first year starting out, um, then you would have the, you know, the first year to kind of focus on your academics, uh, you know, get an understanding of Ryerson, our community, and then apply at the end of next year. Christy, maybe you can also touch on this, um, but in terms of like fast tracking or if you're behind a few courses, how does that work with co-op? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so like I mentioned before, the, um, the, the main course that we look for for your application to get into co-op is GMS 400 with a minimum of a B plus. Um, for other courses, we understand that, you know, students might need to drop a course in order to improve their grades or they find that, you know, they might want to take an extra course or things like that. So if you are thinking about, um, you know, dropping or taking an extra course or dropping a course, if you're behind or ahead by one or two, it, it's not a huge deal and normally we're pretty flexible with that. Um, when you are behind or ahead too many courses, though, that would, um, you know, that would help us think that you are not in the proper place in your program to do so. So if you were to apply and say that you were only, only ahead by like two courses, maybe you took two like third year courses, that would be fine because the important thing is that you would still be able to be considered a co-op student during, or sorry, a full-time student during the rest of the co-op program. But if you were to apply and say, hey, I'm ahead by 10 courses, you would be ahead by a full year. And at that point, you would not be in the correct spot in the program to sign up for it. Um, 
Ideally, if students are considering, uh, you know, dropping a course or, or adding another course, ideally it's not your core courses because those are, you know, pretty specific to your, um, to your program. But if you are going to drop like an elective, it's a lot easier to pick that up later on in the program than maybe some of your other courses. Um, if you are considering doing that, I would recommend meeting with your academic advisor for the GMS program. Um, and they would be able to kind of help you figure out, um, you know, what, when you might be able to take that course in another part of your program. So, uh, Lise, Christine, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, any more uh, time for questions. Um, but we appreciate you coming out so much and taking time out of your busy schedules. Uh, I, I know you talked about how many meetings you guys have in one day. So thank you so much. Um, and please, students, uh, visit the BCH and uh, talk to Elise, talk to Christine, because they can help you so much and they can be a great resource to you. Um, so once again, thank you both so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, now, before we move on to our next speaker, who will be uh, Vic Singh, uh, just a word from George, our marketing director. Uh, hi, everybody again. So I just wanted to quickly remind you about the social media contest, which is happening. And also, if you're a speaker and you want to participate and have a chance to win the gift cards, it's a really simple process. So first of all, you have to follow RGMG online on Instagram, then simply just post a story, something. And if it's creative enough, you can win. It's a great price. Trust me. It's the Basil Box gift card and Amazon gift card too. So lastly, don't forget to tag us at RGMG online. If you don't tag us, unfortunately, we cannot see you. And last but not least is don't forget to uh, use the hashtag, hashtag YGMS. Thank you so much, Mo. Thank you so much, George. Um, so yeah, please don't forget to enter our social media contest. Uh, next up, we have uh, one of our faculty uh, advisor, uh, Vic Singh. Uh, for those of you who are upper year students, uh, you may uh, know Vic Singh. And for those of you who are entering first year and going to a GMS major, you'll be seeing him a lot. So please give a warm hand to Vic Singh. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. So nice to see all of you. Wow, it's a good turnout. Uh, so I'm here to talk about GMS and why you should take GMS. So, I mean, I won't spend too much time. I think I'll maybe have more time to, to maybe answer some of your questions. Um, I've been with Ryerson for over two years, but I've taught before. Uh, my background is international business, finance, um, and what I find the GMS program in Ryerson, it's actually, it provides a very unique perspective, which I haven't seen in any other programs in Canada. I might be a little bit biased, but if you look at global management, it's, it's a fascinating field uh, that prepares to for the ever evolving global uh, dynamics as we see on a daily basis. We're seeing what, what COVID-19 is doing to us, right? In terms of how businesses are evolving, uh, we've seen the rapid uh, rise of economies of Asia, we see the rise of China, we see the rise of India, we see the geopolitical risks involved with that, almost what we call a clash of civilization. Um, we're seeing a decline in traditional developed economies, and we're also seeing, uh, you know, the rise of resource-rich Africa. You know, Africa is a, is a continent which you cannot ignore, uh, has more resources than any other continent on this earth. Now, with the changes in the global business dynamics, as businesses, you know, as economies do, they're also evolving in their approach. They're trying to reach out to these uh, untapped consumer base. Uh, and, and we're seeing a rapid increase in globalization as we speak. It could be, you know, from China becoming the biggest manufacturer on this earth, uh, or India being one of the biggest service provider on this earth, uh, to seeing also rapid increase in other economies such as Vietnam and Bangladesh and so forth. So the program in Rice and it provides a very unique perspective of learning management go by going beyond the traditional fields of business management such as accounting, marketing uh, and, and so forth. Um, you know, so you'll, you will still be learning accounting, you'll still be learning marketing, but you'll be learning uh, in terms of a global perspective, a global context, right? So it, it enables the students to acquire cutting edge managerial skills and cultural understanding, which I think is, is kind of, uh, you know, an afterthought in, in business studies. 
uh, to really function well in, in the changing global business environment. The businesses, the way they are, they are going to change. In four years from now, you know, you're already seeing the increase of robotics. We're seeing the increase of virtual work. And where the job market is going to be, we don't know, right? I mean, when I graduated from university, it was like, you know, you're either going to be in, go in finance or marketing or you're going to do something like that and you're going to stay there. You're going to work there for the next 30 years and you're going to literally retire and die there. It's not the case now, right? Things are changing so much. Um, so, so what the GMS program does is provides you that, that international context uh, while preparing you for the subject matter expertise as you need in, in, in the manager field. Uh, the other key asset of this program is the faculty. You'll find that the faculty in business management are pretty much industry experts. They bring a lot of uh, experience from the actual workforce. So when you, when you see the teaching, you'll find the teaching is much more relevant uh, in terms of how domestic and foreign businesses, uh, you know, uh, evolve and work rather than just opening a textbook and learning from that. But it provides you a much more current perspective. Uh, so the students can gain a very comprehensive experience from this uh, dynamic program, um, you know, with the strong faculty, uh, international exchange programs, the course selections. For example, we have elective courses in, um, in different uh, regions. So for example, we have, I teach, is the uh, Asia business environment. I have another faculty member who teaches Africa business environment, another one, Middle East. So if you're interested, let's say if you wanna work in some of these regions, uh, you know, could be just for co-op, could be for your full-time permanent career, uh, it allows you, it provides you that perspective. And also if you wanna work in Canada, because if you look at Canada, a lot of the Canadian companies here are very global, right? We're, we're a very small economy when you look at it, very small population. You know, we don't have a choice then to go abroad. It could be for consumers, it could be from uh, gaining resources from abroad and bringing it here. So when you're looking for jobs, it, it gives you that edge compared to uh, other students with, with traditional majors. So, uh, you know, might be a little bit biased in my, in my recommendation, but I think it's a, it's a great program and, you know, you should all look into it. And if you have any more questions, I'm here. You can, you can ask me questions now or you can reach out to me um, after the event. You can email me and we can, we can talk virtually and, and, you know, we can answer your questions. Thank you. I have nine minutes if you have any, any further questions. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Vic. Um, so the, while we wait for questions to come in from our attendees, are there any, uh, you know, personal frequently asked questions that you get as a professor that, you know, from a lot of Yeah, well, one of the question I get is that, you know, um, can I combine majors? I think that's one of, one of the question I get, you know, can I do a, a finance and global management? And my answer is always yes. You should always have a plan A and a plan B. When I did my undergraduate back in the days, I did my bachelor's in business admin, but I liked economics. So I actually did a minor in economics and then I ended up being an economist for a number of years and then reverting back to business. You know, so I mean, it just allows you the flexibility. So uh, I think it's always great to have that mindset going in and not to pigeonhole yourself and just do one thing. Because even when you look at some of the majors that are evolving, like marketing, if you're in marketing, for example, you gotta know technology, right? I mean, data analytics is huge there, right? And you also need to, and when you look at technology, technology is not bounded by national boundaries, right? It evolves beyond it. So if you're running an Instagram campaign, for example, so you're not restricted just by Canada, you're gonna get customers, you're gonna get viewers from across the world, right? So, so it, you know, so even though you might be thinking about marketing, but by having this global management, um, you know, additional major or a minor or whatnot, it just provides you that edge when it comes to also uh, getting a job and also doing well in the job. Uh, uh, do I have any examples of what international experiences are? Um, I mean, um, maybe the co-op can talk more about it, but I know from my own personal experiences, I've had students who've actually gone abroad and, uh, you know, and they have gone internships uh, and they've done very well. And they've really enjoyed these internships. We're not talking about, you know, a small internship. We're talking about working for a global company. Um, uh, I have one student who's actually going to Germany to work for a global company in fall. Uh, and he's doing it through his co-op, right? It's a fascinating experience. Your resume completely stands out 
uh, you know, from your competition when you have experiences like those, right? So, so there's opportunities not just to go for co-op, but there's also academic exchange opportunities where you can go and you can study. And hopefully once we get the vaccine and once we start traveling, uh, you know, that can, that can start again. Uh, you know, I almost think like that, that's not gonna happen uh, cooped up at home. But I think, you know, the globalization is still here to stay. Uh, we will be mobile. We will be reaching out to other places and other people. And I think it just provides you that fascinating opportunity to do things a little bit different and also enjoy because when you when you travel, I mean, for me, traveling is fascinating. I love traveling. I love meeting other people and just experiencing other culture and just living in a, in a completely different business dynamics, which provides you that that edge um, in, in your employment. Uh, Eamon is asking, uh, what courses do you teach at Ryerson specifically for the GMS major? Uh, I teach... Uh, the GMS 200, um, I teach GMS 200. I also teach the Asia Business Environment, which is GMS 691. And I've been, I'm going to teach GMS 400 starting this winter. So so those are the courses I've, I've, I've been teaching. I've also taught in the past the ethics course. Uh, that's when I was part-time at Chang, which was through GMS, but typically GMS 200, 691, Asia Business Environment and uh, GMS 400. Uh, well, Professor Singh, thank you so much uh, for attending today. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come out here. Um, it's my I'm pleasure. Sure, I'm sure our students really appreciated uh, what, uh, what you had to say, and they look forward to having you as a professor as well. Excellent. I'll leave my email address uh, on the chat feature, so if you want to reach out to me, you're more than welcome to email me and connect. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, next up, we have a representative from the International Exchange Program at TRSM, Christy Holdsworth. Um, so please give a warm welcome to Christy. Hello, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I have a presentation. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here. So I coordinate the international exchange program for the Ted Rogers School of Management. I have the fun job of sending students abroad and bringing students in from our uh, 44 partner universities in 26 countries. Um, I've been uh, the exchange coordinator for the Ted Rogers School of Management for the past 15 years. So I've sent uh, hundreds and hundreds of students abroad um, on a uh, um, uh, an interesting journey, a personal development journey. Um, and many of them come back and want to graduate and then move on to do uh, their, their grad school somewhere else in the world and then take on positions in global companies all over the place. So I have, I have alumni all over the place. And I also bring students in um, to study uh, in your classes uh, to give an international perspective. So just to talk about the exchange program, uh, what is an exchange? Uh, the, exchange the exchange program is where we have actually signed a legal agreement between the Ted Rogers School of Management and a partner university, and we've done all the checks and balances that we need to in order to make sure that you can get your credits transferred back to Ryerson. We have also made sure that there's appropriate housing for you, that there's student support there for you, um, and that everything's set up uh, and it should be a smooth process. Uh, you are selected by the exchange coordinator in TRSM to participate uh, through the program, and that's myself and Dr. Dale Carl. Uh, your courses are all approved through our office and uh, tuition, this is the best part, tuition is actually paid to Ryerson. It is your normal tuition, so around $4,500 per semester, um, which is, is helpful because if you uh, decided to study abroad at another university outside the exchange program, you would typically be taking 
asking uh, or paying international student fees, which can be two to three times higher than what you'd be paying at Ryerson. So this is really the big bonus about the exchange program, um, rather than doing a study abroad independent, independently organized. And then all um, administrative help is done through my office. So I hold your hand through the whole process. I have colleagues at um, each one of our partner universities. So I help you get there and then my colleagues help you while you are there. So you're not left to your own devices while you're on exchange. Um, it's well organized. So why is it beneficial? Uh, you're interested in the global management um, program here at Ryerson. Um, you need global business exposure. This is an easy way to get that. Um, as uh, Professor Singh said, globalization is here to stay. Um, we may have hit a pause right now, but it is still going to be happening. Uh, it is great for your resume. So we have th thousands of students um, uh, graduating each year. What is going to differentiate your resume from another Ryerson student's resume? Well, the exchange program will. Um, in a survey done by the Canadian Bureau for International Education found that 91% of employers value prospective employees with international, ex international experience because it develops cross-cultural understanding. And half of those uh, employers said that they choose a candidate who'd studied abroad over one that hadn't. So this is a leg up, okay? This is an easy way to get international experience and to make um, uh, your resume pop when you're applying uh, for jobs. You're going to learn in different um, in a different environment, um, in different methods, uh, depending on where you're going to study. It's not going to be like um, the education system here in Canada or, or, or in, uh, at Ryerson. You're going to meet people from all around the world. So you will be studying, let's say, in France. You will be there with other students from Canada, from the US, from Australia, from Germany, from Chile, from China, everywhere and you're going to be able to network with those students and you're going to meet friends that you will have for the rest of your life. You'll be able to travel um, the region perhaps further if you go to Europe uh, you know you jump on a train and within an hour and a half you're in a new country new language new history um, it's it's really easy um, you're going to experience a new culture and I promise you it will be the best decision you make at Ryerson uh, I've been doing this for 15 years this is what my students say um, it will be life-changing so who is eligible to go on exchange? I'm guessing that the students um, here uh, tuned in today are business management students interested in, in, in global management. Um, you are able to go abroad in your second, third or fourth year. Um, a lot of flexibility there. And it really comes down to your course requirements and your needs. Um, and I have another slide uh, discussing courses. So where can you go? We have uh, 44 partners in 26 countries. We have four in, um, in Australia, one in Austria, three in China, uh, one in Croatia, uh, Denmark, Copenhagen Business School. Um, some of these partners are a top 10 um, worldwide business schools, such as Copenhagen Business School. A lot of our partners do have um, uh, uh, accreditation as we do AACSB accreditation but some of them are called triple crown accredited so they have AACSB accreditation, Equus, the European um, accreditation and then the MBA accreditation. Uh, we have four partners in England, five in France, two in Germany, one in Ireland, one in South Korea, one in Malaysia, Mauritius, Mexico, Morocco, Three in the Netherlands, one in New, uh, New Zealand, Poland, Portugal, three in Scotland, three campuses in Singapore, um, two in Spain, one in Sweden, Thailand, Turkey, Vietnam, and UAE. So we've pretty much, uh, we've covered a lot of, of the world and we're still adding partners every year and, um, and checking out where students wanna go and what universities fit well with our programs. 
Um, how much does it cost? Um, you are paying your regular tuition at Ryerson. You are not paying any tuition to the host university, but you are responsible for covering your own fees. So that would mean visas, flights, accommodations, food, other living expenses, travel, entertainment. There really isn't any application materials. Depending on where you go um, and the cost of living in, those, in, in the destination you choose, it could be anywhere between $12,000 to $18,000. Some places are more expensive than others, such as the UK, um, where you're paying by the pound rather than the, the Canadian dollar. Um, where if you were to go to Thailand, it's much cheaper to, to live um, and the cost of living is much less. Um, that uh, general cost does include your tuition. So um, if you are um, studying at Ryerson and living in Toronto on your own, you are paying probably $18,000 to live in Toronto um, to study here. Um, so, so keep that in, in perspective. Uh, OSAP, it is eligible for this program. So if you qualify for OSAP now, you would um, be able to obtain OSAP um, for your, your semester abroad as you are paying your tuition to Ryerson. And there are scholarships available. Uh, the requirements for the exchange program, we need a 2.5 GPA, it's a cumulative GPA and a clear academic standing. You apply online um, through the TRSM exchange website, which I have on the next slide, I believe. Um, and it's all done online. You upload a one page motivation letter stating why you want to study abroad. What is your interest in doing so? Uh, talk about um, where you have ha you would like to study uh, and what you would hope to obtain from that, along with a copy of your resume. I want to get to know you a little bit better and see what you've been up to and what your interests are. And, um, and course selection, once you, you've applied and you're accepted into the program, we do a learning agreement um, for you. And, uh, and we make sure that you are taking courses that you need for your degree and that they can be transferred back to Ryerson. Um, we try and be as flexible as possible and your courses are transferred back once completed um, as CRTs. It does not affect your GPA. So please attend one of my inf information sessions. Um, they'll be posted um, uh, on the website at the beginning of October. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at trsmexchange at ryerson.ca. And here are a few of my students that have studied abroad. That was in Sweden, New Zealand. You can follow us on Insta. Well, Christy, thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, we uh, don't have uh, time for questions, but please, if any of you do, have, I've seen a few questions in the um, in the chat. Um, oh no, sorry, we have uh, we have time for one question. Um, so I'll just uh, put some of them together. So a few of our students were wondering um, how's uh, COVID impacted, you know, international exchange, and what um, uh, and how will things be moving forward. So currently we have canceled the, f the fall outbound exchange and inbound exchange. Um, we, I have 130 students set to study abroad in the winter term. Um, however, there are travel restrictions still going on and uh, the president's office is making a decision in the next two weeks whether we are able to send students abroad uh, for the winter term. We are hopeful that um, if the, it is canceled, if international travel is restricted um, by Ryerson uh, for the, the winter semester, that we are running as normal for fall and winter. Um, I think as we move through this pandemic, we're more uh, concerned about uh, travel, I think, um, or we're going to find a way around um, travel and being safely. So we'll see. We are moving forward at this point um, with international exchange, at least for 2000, uh, fall 2021, uh, winter 2022. All right, Christy, thank you so much um, for, the, for answering that question. And students, thank you for asking that question. 
And uh, on behalf of RGMG, we'd like to thank you again for coming out and uh, taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to come and talk about the International Exchange Program. It's a very beneficial program that a lot of TRSM students partake in. A lot of my friends have, par have taken part in the ex exchange program and uh, you should consider it as well. So Christy, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have a speaker from uh, Academic Success Center, uh, Aiden, who will be talking to, uh, to us about the services that they provide. Take it away, Aiden. So, hey guys, uh, my name's Aiden. I've been working with the Academic Success Center, which is uh, TRSM's uh, student support center for just over a year now. Um, I have a little slide deck um, that I've kind of prepared. Is it okay if I share my screen? Yes, go ahead. So I'm hoping everybody can see the slides all right. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, my name's Aiden. I've been with the Academic Success Center for just over a year. I'll start off by introducing uh, myself a little bit more. I'll give you guys a little bit more background. Um, so I'm a fourth year business student, I'm currently majoring in marketing and I'm doing a minor in finance. Um, I'm also in the co-op program and I've been working with the Academic Success Center since last fall term. Um, if you guys have any more questions along the way as I start the presentation, just don't hesitate to ask. So we support your transition. Whether you guys are coming in from high school, transferring from another college or university, or have been away for school for a while, universe, university can be a really drastic transition. Um, so the Academic Success Center is here to help you all the way through. So we do offer a number of supports and resources for you guys. Um, number one is tutoring, which is a lot of students um, is the main concern for a lot of students. Uh, so the Academic Success Center provides free group tutoring, usually in small groups of around five to six, to all TRSM students or students who are taking management courses. Um, so you can pre-register for tutoring on Eventbrite. Um, the schedule will be posted on our, on our website at ryerson.ca slash TRSM dash success. Um, so if you guys are looking uh, forward to the tutoring schedule, look this week, so it should be posted this week. Um, so how the tutoring sessions kind of work is that they're led by upper year students who've achieved at least an A minus in the course. Um, and their role is to kind of support the students and help them out with any questions they have. Um, we found that like uh, this tutoring uh, through the APHS has helped a lot of students um, increase their GPAs and practice their skills that are really helpful throughout the entirety, um, throughout the entirety of their coursework. Um, moving on, we also have the virtual study hall. So this is kind of a new initiative that we've started uh, just recently, just this semester due to COVID. Um, so, you know, since a lot of students can't uh, be studying in the libraries or going to the SOC like normally, um, it's kind of distracting to study at home, right? So the virtual study hall is a place where students can meet with a learning specialist. A learning specialist is someone like myself, a peer academic coach, or one of my supervisors. Um, and basically they come into the virtual study hall, they set a goal about what they want to get done during that study hall and they quietly come back and they quietly study and then they check in on their goal at the end of their session, right? And I think, uh, and the purpose of this virtual study hall is for study accountability. So you don't want students to be, uh, we don't want students to be getting distracted while they're at home. So if you attend the virtual study hall, you can set a goal and make sure you're on track to finishing all of your study needs. Um, moving on, we have train to learn workshops. This is uh, something that we've kind of just started last year, but it's actually been really helpful. So Train to Learn is an academic preparedness program and it's designed to support all TRSM students. Um, basically how it works is it's a skills building program and we have, a, we have it for a number of different workshops, right? As you can see, we have it for lost in cyberspace, time management skills, uh, preparing for final exams. Um, so if you go to our website at ryerson.ca slash TRSM success, you can see the schedule of when it's gonna be. And, uh, some, and some of the workshops are are placed at different times like final exams is obviously placed before midterms and before finals and time management is kind of placed earlier in the year just so people can better map out their schedules their calendars to their course outlines and things like that so uh yeah train to learn workshops are a really good tool and they're facilitated by a peer academic coach like myself or one of my supervisors um uh, like i said learning specialists is uh students who students can meet individually so um, through a train to learn workshop is a, in a group setting, right? Through a Zoom call or through Google Meets. Um, but you can also book a one-on-one -on -one appointment if you have more personal needs, right? 
so you can book an appointment with a peer academic coach and you kind of kind of discuss where you've been where you've went wrong in the past and we kind of help identify your areas of strength and your, your areas of weakness and how you can improve to reach your goals this semester um, so meeting with a learning specialist for a one-on-one -on -one appointment can prove to be more beneficial than just attending one of the train to learn workshops um, so in addition to tutoring we also have like writing and language support which is a little bit separate so you can book a 30-minute uh, writing consultation um, with our qualified uh, English language specialists, um, and it can, it can improve your writing skills. Um, I'd say to get the most value out, out of a writing and language support um, session is to bring uh, is to bring a course outline or a course uh, rubric with you to kind of show uh, the English learning specialist so he can see exactly what he needs uh, to help improve your learning skills. So I know I've kind of dumped a lot of information on you guys. Um, Right now, is there any questions that have been asked? Let me just see. So uh, I can't really see the questions right now. Does, did anybody ask? Uh, I think questions are still coming in. Um, so okay. I mean, if you have any uh, frequently asked questions that you usually get, um, you know, as, uh, as part of the member of the ASC, maybe you can just highlight those. Yeah, yeah. So some of the most frequently asked questions is, um, when is the tutoring schedule coming out? How can I book a one-on-one -on -one appointment? Um, so I'd say uh, the main thing to do is go to our website. Um, if you go to our website, rarison.ca slash trsm success, and you go to programs and supports, uh, you can see the tutoring schedule there. It's supposed to be posted this week, so you might not be able to see it right now if you're currently browsing it. Um, but make sure to keep checking by regularly because the schedule can change from time to time. Um, so that is one of the most frequently asked questions. Um, also for the train to learn workshops. Um, those are actually a really good tool that I've actually, I've used in the past um, that I thought were really helpful. So train to learn workshops, um, they're also on our website, they're booked through Eventbrite. Um, so if you guys have an Eventbrite account, it, it kind of links there. So just make sure, uh, I'd say one of the most important things I'd like to stress is keep checking our website for those um, resources and supports because it's updated uh, pretty frequently. Um, Moving on, uh, so like I said, I'm a peer academic coach, but someone who's more qualified than me is one of our learning specialists and my supervisors, um, Joanna Londonio. Um, so she's a learning strategist and she manages all the peer academic coaches. And in addition to booking an appointment with a, a peer academic coach, you can also book an appointment with her directly, right? So she'll be more qualified and she has more experience to kind of help you if your needs, are, if you, if your needs require a little bit more help. Um, and that's also our writing specialist, our English language specialist that I was talking about before, Max. Um, and you can book all of these appointments through our website. We have some more questions. Uh, yeah, sure. That. Uh, Elijah's asking, uh, how can uh, we get into the virtual study lab? Virtual study hall. So um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, when the virtual study hall is going to be available. It should be available, I believe, Mondays, uh, Wednesdays, and Tuesdays um, between two to four. Um, if you check on our website uh, and you go to the virtual study hall, there should be a link that brings you to either a Google Meet or a Zoom call. Um, and basically how it works is there's a number of students who are, in the, uh, who are in the Zoom call or the Google Meet, and there's one peer academic coach like myself or one of my supervisors who you kind of, who regularly checks in and asks people to set their goals and kind of check back, right? So that's kind of how you would access it. Main, for, all of our, um, for all of our resources, it's really through the website because of COVID. So that's one of the things I'd like to stress, keep checking the website for those resources. Elijah, thank you for the question. Um, Dimitri uh, is asking, uh, do you help students with specific courses? Yeah. So. Um, a peer academic coach is somebody who helps somebody with learning skills and strategies such as time management, organization, uh, final exam preparation, but our academic peer helpers actually study or help you study for specific coursework. If you guys can see the slides right now, um, this is the virtual tutoring that we're offering. So courses like accounting, finance, law, marketing, we offer specific tutoring for those courses in addition, for, in addition to coaching for learning skills. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, Fiona is asking, uh, can we get tutoring for any course? Uh, is there a limit for the amount of tutoring that we get? Um, there isn't, uh, I'm pretty sure there is a limit. So I believe it's about one hour per week that you can book for, um, 
for one of our courses, but and our courses are actually limited. So the ones that I have on the screen are, are all the courses for the fall uh, 2020 term. However, uh, the student learning support, um, the SLS, uh, which is through the SLC, if you go to their website, they actually offer more courses and more help. Um, so for courses like economics, which we don't offer, um, the SLS will offer tutoring for that, for that course. And if you're taking more advanced math courses, um, the SLS will offer supports there. So these are all the courses that uh, the Academic Success Center is offering. Um, uh, Fiona, thank you for the question. And Eamon is asking, uh, what are uh, some online resources in regards to time management? Yeah, so time management. Um, if you go to our website and you go to um, resources and supports, uh, we actually have a bunch of tip sheets, right? Um, so if you go, they're all in a PDF format. And one of the things that I find is most helpful is we have a semester calendar and a weekly planner, right? And they're all interactive PDFs, right? So if you guys haven't created um, a semester planner or a weekly planner for, your, uh, for the semester yet, I really suggest doing it. Uh, the interactive PDFs means you can type in all the information through the PDF and just save it like that. Um, so those are kind of uh, some really good uh, time management um, tips that I've been kind of using. Personally, I, a lot of people prefer Google Calendar and things like that, and we do have we do have tip sheets on how to best utilize those too. Well, Aiden, thank you so much again for coming out today. Uh, I know our students really appreciate, appreciate it. The Academic, Success, the Academic Success Center is a fantastic tool at TRSM. I personally use it many times for my courses in first and second year. So I highly suggest that all of you take advantage of it. Um, and thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. No problem. Thank you guys. Everybody have a great day. Um, so that wraps it up for our speakers. Uh, just a big shout out to all of our speakers for coming out today. I know our students really loved it. Um, there was a lot of viable information thrown around and, uh, and I'm sure, uh, you know, our students will take it away. Uh, but please make sure to reach out to all these people that came and spoke today. Uh, if you have any further questions, I'm sure they're always here to help and uh, they would always love to hear your questions. So uh, next up, uh, we have, we'll be announcing our social media winners. Um, so George, uh, take it away, please. Oh yeah, uh, hi again. Uh, so I'm really sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, so it's Miriam and Nader. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, just reach out to us on RGMG online and Instagram and uh, we'll just give all the instructions. So thank you so much for participating. Everybody, thank you so much for taking us. It was a great pleasure to see all your creativity. Thank you to the marketing team. Eamon, if you'd like to introduce the novelties for the year. Hey guys, I'm Amen. I'm the marketing associate. So I know we don't have that much time on our hands left. So I'm just going to be very brief. But the marketing team this year have been really excited into initiating these projects this year, especially because we don't get to see a lot of you guys in person. A lot of it's been this year. How do we focus and keep engagement with all of you students this year? So We've started by initiating IGTV videos and kind of using our Instagram account more to interact with you guys. And the purpose with our IGT, IGTV videos this year is hopefully we'll be able to upload some of the podcasts that we do. So Eric, our outreach coordinator, he's decided to launch this podcast series where a lot of alumni, industry professionals, and professors are coming in and talking about different topics. So hopefully that's on SoundCloud, but we hope to be posting those on IGTV and little snippets here and there. We also wanna be posting our event, event recaps, an event like this on our IGTV as well for folks to review later. And hopefully on our IGTV, we'll also be um, sharing some of the takeovers that we're gonna be doing, which is more so they'll be on our IG stories, basically, where we'll be doing takeovers by current students, alumni, um, the RGMT, RGMG team themselves, and maybe some industry professional, professionals where they're going to be doing a sort of like day in our lives events and we, we can get to see what their lives look like, especially after taking a GMS major. So hopefully converting those into IGTV format for you guys to be able to see later. Our website are also gonna be having some very exciting changes, like some useful information. So this would be regarding in any business and global environment articles, news links, important, 
information to the GMS major students and any supplemental resources that can help you guys throughout the school year. And we're going to be adding a how to section. So this is going to um, include any how to's that we posted on our Instagram so far, like LinkedIn headshots, networking advice, how to study online and any extended student support that will help you guys this year. Um, I've already touched up on our IG story as well as the takeovers that we are going to be doing. And basically the point of that is to see different perspective at each point, whether you're at an academic standpoint within a GMS or now in your career. And um, the last one but not least is the Facebook group page. So we have created a GMS major and minor page this year and that's for students to see any helpful articles related to the major, to the school, um, uh, we have a blog at TRSM, this is TRSM, and basically we're going to be featuring some of those articles that kind of help the GMS students out. A lot of our GMS professors like Dr. Vic Singh, he also published some articles as well here and there and his other colleagues as well. So we want to share those articles with you guys, important dates and information that we get from student advising. And just a way as well for you students to communicate with one another, whether you want to share group chat information or be able to share schedules with each other so that you guys know who's in your classes this year in this virtual environment. But yeah, that's about some of the exciting projects from us this year, marketing and beyond as well. Thank you so much, Eamon. Um, I think we're going to move on to the last thing, closing remarks by our president. All right, that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, specifically the speakers. All of your presentations were very beneficial and valuable. Uh, I'm sure that all of our students um, benefited from your from your presentations. And uh, a huge thank you to all the students that attended our very first event of the year. We hope to see you in our future events, including the USMCA one happening in November, um, in October, my bad. And um, yeah, that is it. Thank you guys so much for coming. And please make sure to follow our social media accounts. Here's our Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and our website. Please feel free to email us at rgmgrrson.ca. And once again, thank you so much for coming. Have a great day. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask us. If you want to unmute yourselves or ask us in the chat box, feel free. And if you want to leave, you're welcome to leave.